Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Since Day One. So I have uh, part one of this Quentin Tarver interview ready, you guys. Quentin Tarver is here giving us an exclusive and I'm excited to have him here with me. So before we get into this interview, I just want to tell you guys what we're going to be doing today to be discussing Quentin's early years before the fame, before Marcus Houston and before Chris Stokes. I just wanted to update you guys. Before we get into this video, you guys, can you please like the video? Do not forget to leave your comments down below. And also, if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to take flight with us. Hey, yo, B. Sending Q. You think they gonna like me, man? Yeah, they gonna like me. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Are you sure? You got mad vocal skills? Of course they gonna like me. Today, I'm here with Quindon Tarver, y'all. I told y'all I was gonna get him. How y'all doing? Do you have anything you want to say before we start? Yes, I do. I would like to thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, it is a, um, it's a privilege, it's an honor, and it's a great opportunity. Um, thank you for having the heart to want to see this, you know, come to the light of justice and just the heart to help. You know, so many people are having so much to say in a negative way, but nobody's, you know, really taking the platform to really try and get the truth and to mm -hmm. help us. So I just want to thank you so much just for all that you're doing and it's it's not taken lightly at all. Thank you're, you. You're so very welcome. Thank you for being here with me today. You're welcome. You guys, we're going to go ahead and jump on in this because I've been waiting. I have been waiting. Like, I didn't ever think I would meet him in person. I didn't ever think he even stayed in Texas and when I found out, I was like, oh my God, where he stay at? So the first question I have for you today, Quindon, is how did you become involved in music? Um, Growing up, I began singing at my grandfather's church when I was four years old. He's a pastor in McKinney, Texas. Shout out to Greater Hope Holy Church, my grandfather's church, Koisi Tarver. Um, but yeah, um, I started singing in church um, as a little boy. The first song I sung was Yes, Jesus Loves Me. And I realized then that like, wow, I had something, mm -hmm. you know, just within myself and then how the response was from the people out there. Okay. And, um, that's pretty much where the beginning of singing, that's where the roots came, and that's where it started, was in church. Okay. Mother started showcasing my talent, I would say, around the age of seven. Mm -hmm. I would do different talent shows, different showcases, mm -hmm. anything that she could put me in where my voice could be heard, oh. honey, I was in. <laughs> so, um, I did all of that. Um, at that time, there was a radio station here in Dallas called um, 100.3 Jams, mm -hmm. and um, I started doing a lot of stuff with them, okay. opening up for different acts that would come to Dallas. And um, this one specific um, event that took place was the Celebrity Basketball Game. Okay. And I did the national anthem there. Okay. And my mom gave my, um, back then they had a little demo package with a folder, your biopic, and your... Uh, your music. Okay. They didn't have EPKs. So it's like a portfolio. Yeah. Okay. And um, that was given to a man by the name of Todd Yancey. Okay. Which was an MCA rep. Okay. Um, and at that time, Immature was on MCA. Okay. So um, I passed that on to Chris Stokes. Okay. And I think after that, we had went back to McKinney to my grandparents' house or something. Something happened. I went to McKinney. My mom stayed at home. And she got a phone call from him. Okay, from Chris Stokes. From Chris Stokes, okay. yes. And then she called me and from my grandparents and was like, I got to come get you because somebody big wants to meet you. Ooh. And I was like, okay, okay. Is like, is this, yeah, I was like, is this really happening? <laughs> right. And she told me, like, it's Immature's manager. Mm -hmm. I knew who Immature was. Oh, okay. So it was like, yes, this is big. So, um. Did you like Immature? Like, were they, like, one of your favorite groups or something? I wouldn't say they were one of my favorite groups, mm -hmm. but um, I did like the song at the time. It was called I Will Never Lie. That okay. was pretty much the only song I had knew from them at okay. that time. Okay. So I was familiar with that, and I liked that song. Okay. And um, the big break came, to answer your question, mm -hmm. by singing at the Celebrity Basketball Game. Okay, for 100.3. Yeah, 100.3 okay. jam. Good jam. Well, how did you come to appear or play a part in Romeo and Juliet? Laura Ziffrin from Hollywood Records. Mm -hmm. um, she... Um, was working there at that time, like when I was, but when I had gotten signed with Chris, mm -hmm. she was working at 20th Century Fox as okay. the music director. Oh. Alan Walker, right? Yes, Alan Walker. Okay. Yeah. Alan Walker was managing me at that time. He was a manager that I had in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Um, he helped to do a lot of stuff for me, actually, in my career. He, I went to the, was it 
Jack the Rapper, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a huge event in Atlanta. With it's a showcase for up and coming artists. It has all the established artists, A and R's, marketers, like everything you need. Industry mm -hmm. is in there if you want to get signed. That's where I first met Seven O Two. Back then, they were called Sweeter Than Sugar. Really? Yeah, <laughs> that's when I first met them. They're awesome. I love them. I really, I love them. Um, he did a lot, and he also did his funk. Okay. You know, he, he did some very foul shit to me as well. Okay. Um, stole money and bought a house when I toured in Australia. Um, so, um, it was like I had fucked me literally and physically, emotionally and mentally written all over my body from everybody that I worked with. I was just dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs, but I ended up being the broke one with no dollars. You right. know what I'm saying? Okay. So, I'm signed to Virgin Records, mm -hmm. and you know, if you know anything about the industry, everybody that knows everybody, they all know everybody. Okay. It's one big, small circle, really. Okay. And I guess she, I didn't even know she had wind of me being signed. I didn't even know she still remembered me. Right. But she remembered me and um, got in touch with Chris. Got in touch with Chris. Uh, through my A&R, Gemma, and wanted me to do the movie. Okay, so Chris was the first person besides yourself, you know, to find out about the movie. Yeah. He told you. Yeah. Okay. And so, I had to go audition. I already knew I had the part, mm -hmm. but I had to go audition to play like you, just to do uh, proper protocol. They be doing that. They have people coming in there wasting time, be standing in line and stuff. Why do you think it's called show business? Man, it's show business. Wasting people. Look, because I could be at this other audition, really getting a part, and y'all here playing with my time. Okay. Um, some stuff is is legit, and some stuff isn't. I mean, it's just hey, it's the name of the game. Well, you know, I love your voice, so can we get a piece of your audition? Do you remember what you auditioned? What'd you sing? I don't know. I think I sung His Eyes on the Sparrow because they wanted something. They wanted a, for the song, I know they wanted to have a gospel feel. That okay. is what I sung. Okay. They wanted a gospel feel for the Everybody's Free song. They wanted it to sound the, that old, you know, get down into your soul and your spirit, make your hair yeah. tingle and almost, Goose you know, world. all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I got to see, look. <laughs> yeah, that's what, they wanted that. Okay. Hey, and I didn't even sing the song yeah, yet. All right, so let come on. I sing because I'm happy and I sing because I am free. Here's a clip of Quindon at onset rehearsals. Brother and sister together will make it through. Oh, yeah. Someday a spirit will take you and guide you there. I know Thank you've you. been hurting, but I've been waiting yes. to be there. And I'll be there just helping you out whenever I can. Okay, so, uh, you went to the audition, you already knew you were getting the part. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, baby. Don't do that, because I'll cry. Whew, it's okay. Don't take that. It is not fair. So you can't ever do nothing about it, and they just did that to you, and then it's just nothing you can do. And they just 
And then it just makes me even matter that they just deny it. Okay. That's why I don't go to church. This choir be having me crying. Okay. So Everybody's Free was a song that you performed for Romeo and Juliet, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so have you ever gotten paid for that song? Um, yeah. Thirty five hundred dollars. That's it. That's all I got. I mean, isn't it like a national worldwide? It's a huge hit. Um it's already it's been in um the movie. Um, it was redone with my voice in it for everybody's free to wear screen. It was an anthem, I think, in 98 or 99 for, like, graduating classes. Um, it sold over, like, 40 million records worldwide, that song. Mm -hmm. And all I got was $3,500. I didn't know when signing the paper. Keep in mind, I had an um, entertainment attorney, mm -hmm. but I had um, a criminal attorney. Okay. So... He probably didn't know what was going on and what been reading them. So I was just signed as a paid performer oh, and never so, signed to where I would get royalties. So like one of them fill-in people, like an extra? Not really an extra. It's like, I need you to come do the background on this song. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay you this amount of money mm -hmm. one time to do these backgrounds, but you ain't getting shit else after that. Get this check going about your way. Thank you so much. Have a great day. What is your voice? So My they voice. just gave you thirty five hundred dollars for your voice and then went and sold forty million records and kept the money? Yes. Perfume, go, go. Anytime. Anytime.